But why aren't you motivated to protest about the persecuted church? Why are you so silent? Does it mean that I want to make Muslims second class? No, no, right, exactly. So what I'm trying to do is not reduce the status of as Muslims, I'm trying to elevate the status of Christian Jews in Muslim countries, right? And I, I am happy to condemn people who preach hatred against Muslims just because they're Muslim. Do you want to be treated like a second class citizen? Right, then that means, then, that, then you're following Jesus' teachings because that's what Jesus taught. So I want to talk about an example of what I just told you about. A Christian was murdered in Egypt. And I want to talk about his story. And I'm quoting the Times of Israel. A Coptic priest dies after he was stabbed on the Egyptian seaside promenade. Cairo, Egypt. A knife-wielding man, mortally wounded, a Coptic priest, in an attack at the popular seaside promenade in the northern city of Alexandria on Thursday evening. Egypt's interior ministry said. The ministry said that the priest died whilst being treated for his stab wounds. It said the suspected attacker had been arrested. The priest was identified by the Coptic Orthodox Patriarch of Alexandria as Osanius Wadid, age 56. It is said that he served as a local parish priest. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this kind of attack is all too common in Egypt. Christians are being persecuted in Egypt. They suffer anti-Christian pogroms on a regular basis. Their businesses are attacked on a regular basis. Their women are kidnapped on a regular basis. And Christians are suffering because of the Islamic Christophobic prejudices based upon the Quran which describes Christians as being the worst of creatures because they don't believe in Islam. And your Western media is silent about it. I'll come to that, sir. I'll take questions at the end. Christians, your church leaders are silent about it. And why are they silent about it? They're silent about it, and this is to answer your question, they're silent about it because you're silent about it. Because you do not raise this issue. Because you do not stand up for the persecuted church. Today, we've had hundreds of Pakistanis protesting because Imran Khan has been removed as the Prime Minister of Pakistan. We have Extinction Rebellion on the streets protesting about the global environmental crisis. We had thousands of Christians join the protests about BLM. But why aren't you motivated to protest about the persecuted church? Why are you so silent? Let me suggest to you the reason why you are so silent is because you belong to churches that are more like social clubs than you belong to a fellowship that teaches that you are the people of God. And when 
as it says in Corinthians, one part of the body suffers, the whole body suffers. So when Hindutva are persecuting Christians in India, we in Britain should be raising our voice for them. When Christian priests are being killed in Egypt, we in Britain should be raising our voice for them. Your priests and your bishops are weak. Your priests and your bishops are cowards. Your priests and your bishops would rather be accepted by the same liberal media that hides the persecution of Christians than speak up for them. So what can we do? What can you do? The first thing that you can do is that you can raise this issue with your friends. You can raise this issue with your work colleagues. You can raise this issue with politicians in public discourse. No discourse in Britain about Islamophobia should ever go without us mentioning the Christophobia across the Islamic world. You should raise this issue in your churches and you should seek to radicalize your churches so that they stand in solidarity with persecuted Christians around the world. And what does that look like? It means going out onto the streets and protesting, networking with other Christians who feel the same, and being political activists for the persecuted church. There are many Christian organizations that are doing great work for the persecuted church. Barnabas Fund, Christian Solidarity Worldwide, Open Doors, Release International, Voice of the Martyrs. All of these Christians help the persecuted church. But I want to suggest to you that their approach is like putting a plaster on a gaping wound. We are not ambitious enough. We should seek an independent Christian country in the Middle East where Christians can be safe. We should seek an autonomous state in India where Christians can be safe. We should seek an independent Christian state from Burma where Christians can be safe. Elevate your discourse, brothers and sisters. Elevate your ambition for the persecuted church. Stop simply accepting that this is the way we've always done it and we can't do anything else. Organize yourselves into networks away from the center of your fellowships. Even if your cowardly religious leaders don't fight with you for the persecuted Christian. Radicalize yourselves for the persecuted church and stand in solidarity with them. Any questions before I move on to my next topic? Any questions? By the way, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. I just had, I just had like a small question. Because do you think like everyone is equal? So, the question is, do I think everyone is equal? As a Christian, I can say absolutely. The Bible in the Old Testament instructs us to treat the foreigner like the native born. Which means that under law, I believe that you should be treated the same as me. Furthermore, as a Christian, I believe that we are made in the image of God. Regardless of our religion, regardless of our creed, regardless of the color of our skin, 
We are all made in God's image and that was given to you by God himself and so your religion can neither add to it nor take away. Which means that when I see you, brother, I have to treat you as my equal. But by contrast, under Islamic law, I am not an equal. Now, do you agree with me that I can oppose a system of laws that would turn me into a second-class citizen? Like, I think, like, especially in, like, Islamic uh, countries, like, there's a lot of, like, Christophobia, so people are hating on yes. and, and stuff. But the thing I, like, miss in, like, every debate, like, if it's, like, Islamophobia or, or Christophobia, like, it doesn't matter that there's, like, no... Uh, it's only the extreme. So it's either like, oh, uh, yeah, we as Christians are like, uh, 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 like ranked as second class citizens of, for example, Islamic countries, or the other way around. So uh, uh, Muslim people are like, oh, we are treated as second class citizens. But there's no like coming together, like making bridges, and that's the that's the thing that I miss because I hear you preaching like. Oh yeah, for people in uh, in like uh, Muslim uh, Islamic countries, people are like treated as second-class citizens, and I like I agree with that. Are you a Christian, bro? No, I'm. To be honest, I'm like uh, I don't know. I don't know. Like okay, so uh, so let me let me let me just can, can I just, yeah. Uh, and the things like I hear you preaching about like Christian people uh, who are being oppressed in like uh, Islamic countries and I agree there should be like attention to that but the thing is like I think you sh should be like should be preaching for all people who are like So allow me to address this point So guys you're gonna have to move in if you can't hear us okay yeah, And feel free to move in don't worry like Covid's over officially you're all gonna be safe And I'm sure everyone here had a bath So move in don't be shy if you can't hear okay so, so let me be, let, let's get this straight. Christianity teaches that all people are equals under the law and in dignity. Yeah. Okay? Islamic law, by the people that are handing out little pamphlets like that one in this country, teach that I should be made a second class citizen. That's what Islamic law teaches. Now, one second, let me, no, 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 let me finish. Now. It is not wrong of me, nor does it contradict your thesis, for me to oppose those teachings. If a system of law wants to treat me as a second class citizen, it is a right thing that I oppose that teaching. That I oppose it because love demands that I do so. When my brothers and sisters, like the Coptic priest that was murdered in Egypt two days ago, when I oppose the teachings that led to his murder, I am doing a good thing. Would you agree? Know, right, brilliant, brilliant. So it is, so we've agreed that it is a good thing to oppose Islamic teaching. Now, that means, what do I want? Does it mean that I want to make Muslims second class? No, no, right, exactly. So what I'm trying to do is not reduce the status of Muslims, I'm trying to elevate the status of Christian Jews in Muslim countries. Now that's a good thing, is it not? Right, so those of you who disagree with the idea of treating people as second class because they have a different religion, or second class because they have a different colour of skin, should oppose Islamic teaching and you should have no shame in doing that. But on what basis can you do it? You can't do it from some relativistic nonsense that says every religion's the same, because clearly they're not. You have to argue from some principles, and Christianity gives those principles that you're looking for. You're looking for equality. Christianity teaches that equality. But I think like you're generalizing a bit like about this, uh, this, uh, Islamic You think it's a generalization? Yeah, yeah. Right, one second. Hold on one second, because you're conflating two categories. I have not said all Muslims follow Islamic teaching. I haven't mentioned what Muslims do because there are good Muslims who ignore Islamic teaching and there are bad Muslims who follow Islamic teaching. I am, so, I am talking about Islamic teachings. Yeah, yeah. Now, the thing is, if Islamic teachings teach, so for example, I give you an example, right? Islamic teachings say 
that if a Muslim becomes a Christian, they should be executed. Do you agree with that? Do you? Right. But that's what Sahih al Bukhari says. Says that uh, if a Muslim, if a Mus yeah, Muslim's life can be forfeited for three reasons: one, if they commit adultery; two, if they kill without good reason, which is the concept of kisas; and thirdly, if they leave the religion of Islam. Now, I am defending the rights of Christians who want to leave Islam. Will you join me in that? Yeah, yeah. I, Brilliant. I, I think that's like a good cause. But the thing that I wanted to say is that I believe that nowadays there are like double standards. Like for, for instance, also for uh, like your preachings, I, I totally agree. But the, on the other side is I, I believe that like the media, the media just um, once you create a certain picture of like what's good or wrong because for instance now with the russian uh, the russia ukraine conflict like putin is uh portrayed as like a bad guy and i think like in a sense it's 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 really bad what he's doing like invading countries should like not be not be an option yeah can, 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 but the thing is for instance when the, U the, the United States of America invaded like the Middle East, and I believe that that's what that's when like the civilization of yeah. the Middle East started. Yeah. They killed over one million civilians, yeah. and I and I think there there are okay. No so 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 hold on one second, because I don't want you to think that I'm some media lapdog. That no no no. Oh, wait one second. I, I totally agree. The media always focuses our, our attention on something, and then ignores something else. It does it all the time. So I completely agree with you. Don't trust the BBC, don't trust the Guardian, don't trust CNN, don't trust Fox News, don't trust Russia Today, don't trust the media. The media come at every story with their own agenda. But let me, but, but the point is, I'm not talking about the media. The media are quite happy to talk about Islamophobia in Britain, but they never talk about Christophobia in Pakistan. Yeah, they never talk yeah. about they never talk about the fact that Christians in Pakistan are second class citizens and a threat as second class citizens made to wash the streets, clean the sewers and be the serfs and servants of people and can be regularly accused of blasphemy with no proof that's not true. and then that's not true. and then suffer anti-Christian pogroms. And the thing is, you've been conditioned to think we've got to we've got to try and look at everything fairly. And that's good. I'm not saying that's a bad thing. But the point is, you should also be willing to go with the evidence. Go and look at how the blasphemy laws in Pakistan are being used abusively against the Christian minority. Yeah, yeah. Do you also think that there's like, you say like Islamic teachings are bad, so... Islamic teachings are evil. But do you also think that uh, there, uh, there are like um, people uh, from Christianity who do bad uh, things as right, well? Right, but again, you're making that category mistake. And you're doing this thing. One second, brother, are you talking Muslim? to me? Are you talking was to me? Muslim? Focus Hitler on what Muslim. I'm doing. Mussolini okay? No, ignore the triggered father over here. Is that right? Putin now? Focus Hitler on Muslim. our conversation. Okay? You're calling evil Muslim. So, no. you, you're the making a category mistake. I am not confusing the category of Islam with the category of Muslim. Yeah, yeah. I know that Muslims sit across an entire spectrum and that there are some Muslims that just treat Islam culturally. There are some Muslims that are reformist. There are some Muslims that are no, conservative. There are some Muslims that are radical. There are some Muslims that are extremists. Never in our conversation have I ever said the word Muslim until just now, right? In our conversation, when you watch it back on Soko Films, all the time I said Islamic teaching, Islamic teaching, know, Islamic yeah. teaching. It's the same thing. So the point the is, thing. you're confusing two categories. No. I'm not. And I am saying to you, I'm not interested in bad Muslims and good Muslims. That is irrelevant to our conversation. I am talking about what the Quran and the Hadith he say, he what and what the Quran and the Hadith around. say is evil because it denigrates me to a second class citizen. Shall I tell you how the Quran describes me? Can I say one? Yeah, go on. Do you also think that Chris, uh, Christian teachings can be bad? Because, so. Because like for instance, in the 18th century, yeah, in the 17th yeah, thank century, you, bro. you know what happened there. People uh, use Christianity or believe that Christianity taught them yeah. that 
uh, black people and other people were second, second class citizens, right? Okay. And they enslaved them. Can right? I reply to that? Yeah, sure. So again, what you've done is you've mixed up the category of believer and belief. Once again, you've appealed to the idea of good Christians, and bad Christians. No, one second, let me finish. You did just do exactly that. No, one second. I challenge you right now, bring out a verse in the Bible that teaches me, as the Quran teaches the Muslim, that the non-believer is the worst of creatures. Because the Quran says that because I reject Islam, I am the worst of creatures. But you will never find a verse in the Bible that describes Muslims or non-believers in that way. Can you find me one? Uh, I'm not um, like either in the Islam or the Christianity. I'm not. Um, I'm not. Uh, I, I don't have the knowledge. You know, I don't uh, because I'm not. I'm not. A That's Christian fine. Or Muslim. But the thing I want to say is that I think that because uh, from your belief everyone is equal that we uh, we yes. agree to that right? believer and unbeliever but the thing i miss like in you or like the islam teaching or whatever is like the equal um equal proportion of uh things that are bad you know you only focus on Christ christian persecution in uh, is uh, like is in islam teachings and muslim countries. is that wrong I don't think I don't. I'm, I'm not saying that is wrong, but okay. I, I don't hear you about like uh, day, that there are daily 25,000 people dying because of starvation. Bro, you, 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 you don't know me, so you don't know what I say or no, what I do. I, how I, many I, how many so-called films have you watched? None, but I base none. I, I base my opinion on what I just watched. Right, but I, but I then you're saying you're saying I did. Yeah, listen, listen, bro. Listen to the, your own logic. You listen to me talk once about one subject and then you've gone, I've never heard you say. How can you argue that point when you've only listened to one conversation? That's true, but I don't think, I don't think you've done that, like, to be honest. I right, hold on one, bro, because, because you're... Okay, okay, can you show me uh, a video where you, um, where you, where you come up for uh, people who were, like, um, uh, dying uh, from malnutrition or Muslim Yes, or yes. Okay. There are loads of videos on Soko Films where I talk about the responsibility of Christians to the poor. There's loads of them. Okay, you okay, just have to watch Soko okay, Films and you'll see them. But my point to you is that what you're trying to do is you're trying to diminish one just cause by pointing to another just cause. Now I'm not arguing... No, 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 one second, no, no, let, me, no, no, let me reply, let me reply. I am not saying that it is wrong to talk about other issues of justice. Well, if you want to talk about poverty, bro, I'll stand right next to you and say, Amen, Amen, yeah, Amen. Yeah. But my point to you, as a man of goodwill, should you not be standing with the Christian as they oppose Sharia law that would turn them into second-class citizens? I'm against all evil. So, all so now answer my yeah, question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I'm, I'm, but I'm also against Muslims who are oppressed for racism or other major issues. But I think that nowadays they're just uh, double standards. Like, for instance, we don't hear any uh, any media or not, most media talk about your other issues that you uh, talking about. Yeah. I know you're absolutely right. When yeah. was when was the last time you heard about persecuted Christians in in the Islamic world? Not a lot. Do you know it happens every day? Yeah, yeah, I know. I know. Did you know that this year? 30,000 Christians have been killed in Nigeria no, I don't by know. Muslim militants. No. Would you describe that as ethnic cleansing, ethnic religious cleansing? Yeah. Yeah. So, so my, my, my so, so you've got to, you, you get, you get this, you, you get this kind of abusive behaviour by Muslims in the park. You just have to ignore them. You just have to ignore them. So, so my point, my point to you, my point to you, bro, is don't dilute a just cause. Don't dilute a just cause. Focus on me. If you want to talk to him, feel free to go away and talk to him. But right now, focus on our conversation because the die thugs like this one, the die thugs like this one, don't want Christians to talk about persecuted Christians. So when we talk about it, this is their behaviour all the time. I don't know why I'm pointing to you. You're absolutely right. I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to point at you, and you're absolutely right to call me out on that. I apologise. Yeah, no, I've apologised, and I've apologised. I've apologised on camera. So this kind of Islamic thug who wants to diminish the persecuted Christians, yeah? 
I challenge you to go away and do your own research. I'm asking you, you are the like, one who said uh, it. The last thing I want to talk about is a, like a little anecdote. Yeah. Because my dad was, uh, my dad was like originally like uh, he was a progressive Muslim. So yeah. In the most uh, like is Islam, you have like uh, different kinds of uh, teachings, and he Just was making from the, things up. Uh, I don't know if you know the yeah, Alevitism, yeah. like the Alevitism. What is the source? I'm asking uh, for, for the source. For instance, people are also uh, women on, and uh, men are uh, uh, are if you say dancing for, uh, with each other, like yeah. while they're preaching, for yeah. instance, they dancing with music, and I think that's a good thing. The but they were they were living in the south of Turkey, um, yeah, uh, with like Armenians, Christians, Jews, and we're all good. But then. Uh, uh, one day, uh, like the Turkish government uh, placed a lot of like um, right-wing nationalists and like um, uh, like uh, extremist Muslims. Yeah. And then one day uh, they attacked the whole village because he was like a progressive Muslim. Yeah. They, attacked, yeah. they attacked him and like there was also an attack right the Yeah. And I condemn that. Yeah, yeah. So there, you've just heard me condemn Muslim on Muslim violence. Yeah, yeah. Right? I condemn it. So, uh, uh, give me an example of that. For example, Right, firstly, again, you, you, and, and I want you to really register this, because you're consistently looking at good Muslims and bad Muslims and good Christians and bad mu Christians, and I'm saying to you, I'm not interested in that conversation. Well, let me finish. This is my final word to you. My argument is not based on good Muslims and bad Muslims, or good Christians and bad Christians. My argument is based on the teachings of the religion. Right, so let me finish. If you're going to judge Christianity, you need to judge it based upon the teachings of Jesus Christ. If you're going to judge Islam, you have to base it on the teachings of the Quran and the Hadiths. And I would ask you to look up words like dhimmi and like janissary and go and look up how Christians were treated under Islamic law and see if there's Islamic teachings that justify that. Then by contrast, look at how Jesus teaches. He says this, that you treat one another as you want to be treated. So do you want to be treated like a second class citizen? Right, then that means, then, that me, then you're following Jesus' teachings because that's what Jesus taught. Jesus teaches that because I don't want to be treated like a second class citizen, I don't treat the liberal Muslim like a second class citizen. I don't treat the atheist like a second class citizen. That's what Jesus' teachings is. And Christians should be judged by how close or far away they are to what Jesus said. That's what you've got to judge them by. Now, have you got a Bible, bro? No, no. I'd like to give you one. Now, sadly, the only Bibles that I've got at the moment are King James Bibles. Okay. These are Old English Bibles. Okay. So you may occasionally, you're going to find a word that will go like, what the hell's that word? Like, because it's old fashioned. So just Google it and you'll find a modern equivalent. There's, that's my gift for you. It's a really nice yeah. conversation. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. I, I only want to say is because because there's like a, because there's like a certain Islamophobia going on. That's that's right. What about Christophobia? No, no. I, I, Okay, like answer my question. There's like a certain Islamophobia. There are Islamophobia, definitely. Yeah. I heard a, I heard someone when I was talking about the fact that I've dated Muslims. I heard some ethno nationalists, I suspect, say call me a traitor. Now I would describe that as Islamophobia. Yeah. Right? And I, I am happy to condemn people who preach hatred against Muslims just because they're Muslim. Yeah, be, and or because they have a different color skin and, to mine. And because of that, I'm like, I don't live here, I, 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 I live in the Netherlands. And because of this, I'm like treated as a second class citizen, not all the time, but for instance, when I apply for a job, and for instance, they just like, um, they qualify me because of my name, and my looks. Right. They don't like... Well, I didn't do that here. Yeah, yeah, I know, but I, do you understand like... Uh, you just heard me literally say, and I'll, I'll say it again for the camera. I condemn people who hate on Muslims just because they're Muslims. Yeah. But let's be clear. I think that any decent human being should oppose 
any Muslim who seeks to impose Sharia law. So if any Muslim, as many Muslims in this park do, seek to bring Sharia law to any country, including to Mecca itself, those Muslims should be opposed. And if you oppose good Muslims who are following Islamic teaching, you're a good person. Yeah, the thing, I just oppose everyone who is doing bad. So it doesn't matter if they're Muslim, Christian, non muslim But that's Jesus' yeah. teaching, bro. Go and look it up. It's called the Golden Rule. Jesus said, teach your... Love your neighbor as you love yourself. Yeah, I know, like, Do unto of, others as you would have them done unto you. That's Jesus' yeah, teaching. Know a lot of uh, moral codes are coming from religion. I don't know. Well, I'm saying they're not just coming from any religion. They're coming from Jesus' religion. And that's the religion I invite you to follow. Have a read of that. If you've got any questions other than the English, which you can Google yourself, and you're going to find old words in that one. But any, any kind of questions about the Christian faith, feel free to come and talk to me again. It was a real pleasure talking to you. Soco Films, S-O-C-O Films. All right, you look after yourself. All right, God bless, take care.